Well, hi, guys. It's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. I'm going to start out by asking you to forgive me because I really, truly believe that I need to do one more session on communion. I had two or three people inbox me asking me some questions that I kind of want to answer today, and I want to show you how I do communion at home. Uh, when I do it with, or even in a group, okay? I do a lot of Bible studies and meetings, and I am kind of in some circles known as the communion lady. So anyway, I think I would be remiss not to talk about this one more time. I just want to clear up yesterday. Yesterday, I was talking about, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, what Paul was talking about is that these people were coming to a big meal eating all the food and getting drunk. He was correcting that. And even in uh, the other verses where it talks about examining yourself and taking it in an unworthy manner and judgment and all of that, all he was saying is, I want you to think about why you're coming to this party and doing and acting the way that you are because it's not to remember Jesus and what he gave us. And that's all he was saying. He even ended it with that, okay? At the very end, he brings up again about how they're not, they should not be coming there to eat and get drunk. This letter, this one little section, has turned the church upside down into this religious, condemning, judgmental ritual that has lost its meaning. Now, I want to go back and tell you one more thing, and then I'm going to role model uh, before I close uh, how I do communion. But watch this. I'm going to go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm in verse 30. And it says, For this reason, many of you are weak, unhealthy, and many die before their time. What Paul is saying here is that they're coming there to be gluttons and get drunk, and they have lost the true meaning of communion. In the early church days, that is how people got healed and stayed healed, is they would take communion. Jesus said in John chapter 6, uh, maybe verse 40 through or 54, somewhere in there, he says that we, he was telling people to eat his body, his flesh, and to drink his blood. And he was really making a... Uh, a little bit of a, a future reference to communion of how we would partake of his body by his stripes, his body, we are healed, and by his blood, we're not only uh, forgiven of sin, but sin is remitted, removed, and taken away as if it's never happened before, as well as his own blood, he entered into a new covenant with God the Father and invites us into that adopted sonship through him. So I just want to make sure you understand, uh, and of course the church has lost the meaning of communion. Look, people get healed in communion. People get set free of addictions and all kinds of stuff that has them held bondage, guys. I want to tell you, I used to go to this church, and I'm not going to name the church, uh, but every time we did communion, he would say, and if you're not saved, you can't participate in this. I've actually been in churches that won't let you participate if you're not a card-carrying card member of that church. Well, I was on my way home talking to God, and I said, is that really true that you can't take communion if you're not a Christian or, or saved? And he has such a great sense of humor. My father said, well, it's true in that church, isn't it? <laughs> and so anyway, that never really settled with me uh, just from what I had studied in the Bible. So let me tell you a story. I did take communion in a church, not the one I just talked about, but a different church, and I had cervical cancer. And I took the bread and the wine, and guys, I'm telling you, when I started praying and I said, Jesus, this is your body. Through your body, I'm healed. And I know that I'm healed because, Father, you love me. Did you know my fingers holding that bread started tingling all over? And that very moment, I knew that I had been healed. And I was. 
So you're looking at a girl that has experienced communion and gotten healed from it. But anyway, let me uh, finish this up and do communion. I just want to go through this really quick with you. I like to do... I put together my own little communion from all three of the Gospels, which is Matthew, Mark, and Luke, who uh, capture what was said at the table. John doesn't capture that part. He captures the foot washing and some other things, but he doesn't actually record what Jesus said. So Jesus told them when they reclined, look, this is so dramatic in the original Greek. Jesus is at the table and he says, I have so earnestly desired to have this meal with you before I suffer and die. I will not have this meal ever again until the kingdom has its true meaning. This meal has its true meaning in the kingdom of God. He says he won't have the bread or the wine, either one, until the true meaning of what he meant is till everything was fulfilled through his death, burial, and resurrection, which brought the kingdom of God down to earth, and it put it in us as believers. So this is how I do communion a lot of times. I just take this bread, and I start thanking my Father for Jesus. Father, I thank you for Jesus. I thank you that by his stripes, by his beating on that Roman whipping post, any time that I feel sick, or weak, I can come to you because his body is life. He's the bread of life. And I take this bread of life right now into my own body and I bring Jesus' life in me and I shall live lifelong and healthy in this land. And Father, I thank you for the bread. I thank you for his body. Jesus, I thank you for your body and that you healed me by your wounds, and I receive it, and I take the bread, okay? There you go. And then I start thanking the Father and Jesus for his blood. Jesus, I thank you for your blood. I thank you for everything that you did for me and for the whole world, that your blood set me free of all of my sins, you not only set me free, but you carried them away. And my father doesn't see me the way he did. Because your blood sealed the new covenant. And a covenant that I can enter into and be a son or a daughter of God. This new covenant brings me into your family. So father, I thank you for the blood that carried away my sin, that remitted it. And I thank you, father, for the new covenant that brings me into relationship as your daughter. And I receive the blood of Jesus today. Oh, well, I thank you, Father, and I thank you, Jesus. Okay, guys, I hope that I have role modeled uh, healing for you through communion and being set free. Also, I had a lady ask me how long did I recommend someone doing communion before they get healed. I take communion until I'm healed, period. I, I tell other people, take communion till you're healed. Till it's gone and it's finished, take communion every day until you get what you have asked for. Well, guys, I'm going to wrap it up, and tomorrow I'm getting right back on the path to the cross. God bless you. Bye-bye.